Well, hello folks off YouTube. My name's Ian and welcome to me shed. So I went to the yard yesterday, weighed in, you've seen that. Went again this morning. I'll show you the what did it weigh, what did it pay in a minute. But I cut a little bit out of yesterday's video. When I went to the yard when I met Ellie, Ella. And uh, there's a reason for that. <laughs> so anyway, so Robert came back from somewhere and I said, oh, Robert, by the way, I said, uh, the, uh, the bicycle with the two flower baskets on it. I said, uh, you'll have to ask one of the lads where they've put it. So I salute round, can't see it. Says to Ella, Ella, have a look on the camera. See what happened to it. In case he, I left it, because I left it on top of the bin and Big Ian had just tipped the bin into the skip. So she checks the camera and says, nope, weren't on top of that skip. Ian says, no, weren't on top of that skip. So it works out though, when I went this morning, when I weighed in, there was a guy, an old guy, I'm old, how old were he? Guy behind me. And he spots this and he says to one of the lads, he says, uh, would you mind if I buy that? So Ellie, Ella, sold it to him. And I was really hurt, bro, when I found out how much she'd sold it for. 15 squids. And I probably got 75p in, in iron for it, if that. So Ella was in bad books with Robert for the rest of the day. There you go, Ellie. I've told the world. And just speaking about Ella, Listen, Robert's keeps um, Robert's dad, Ella's dad, Gary, who's doing this 47 mile run, uh, keeps putting up thanks to everybody because there are people still giving to that cause from the scrap community, and he's just you know overwhelmed at that. And I'm just going to throw a cheeky one in where we wanted him to raise five thousand pounds. And he was stuck, I think, at about 2,800. And between all of us, we smashed it. It's now just a little bit shy of £7,000. So, I'm going to say again, if anybody hasn't given, anybody can spur a yen, a euro, two Canadian, one and a half Canadian dollars. I was a bit urged last time. So one and a half Canadian dollars. Uh, but that would mean about five Australian dollars, wouldn't it? Uh, any Monopoly money available for a pound, dollars, whatever. Whatever's your country's money. Just see if you can spur just a little bit more and we'll smash that 7,000. Cause he's due to run it. And I will do a post on that day because there's an app that you can actually follow him running up and down hills all the way around the lake. I think it's Lake Windermere. It's not a lake. I call it Lake Windermere. It's Windermere. It's a mere. You'd have to Google the difference between a, a mere and a lake and a water. But don't look up Lake Waters and Mears because that was a that was a, a, a pop group. Right. Enough of that. Back to us. Well, <laughs> since I recorded that uh, video this morning, uh, Gary's doing his 47 mile. It's already smashed through the 7,000 barrier. But that doesn't mean you still can't give a little more. So we still got the box of plugs, but with all that aluminium gone, and I didn't know I had so much in here, uh, and it filled the car, we've definitely got a walkway. And floor space, and we're almost got a clean bench. I've just been bashing copper out of these light transformers, but these are like, got all heavy plastic round them. But I've been doing it at the speed of light. So there you go. They do bash off. But you've got to really do a lot of hammering too. Because if you can see that, the wire is 
imprinted in all those grooves. But it does come apart. Flies off like that. Right. That's the only problem. You've got to tidy up everywhere afterwards. Still, what did it weigh? What did it pay? Right. Let's have a cup of tea in a coffee cup. I'm a heathen, a peasant, uncouth. So, old old alley, thousand pound a ton, not too shabby. That uh, wagon underbody safety rail, which I cut up, has only said to me, "Why do you cut it up? Why do you not sell it?" Well, the people who took it off the vehicle had damaged it quite badly. I, I couldn't be. I needed the space anyway. It's got about fourteen hundred pounds a ton. But if I, I mean, I've got to buy you, I'd have probably got a lot more than the £18.20 stainless steel coming in at £1,000 a ton. Two batteries, uh, one from my, my neighbour and one I picked up, uh, giving us a total of £100.98. So almost worth, no, definitely worth not having a drink last night, getting up early so I could go to the yard. <laughs> Okay. I'm fine. Well, I'll see you too, buddy. Are they all okay? Yeah, they're, they're, they're fine. They're all over you. Oh, I've got fans. You've got fans? I have got fans. Only fans? No, no, only fans. <laughs> hey, man, make a killing on that one, so it's all your fans. No, they're tight. They don't, they don't, they don't spend money. <laughs> hey, they do. They do, because there's one guy because I mentioned yesterday, it's cooking coronation to, or tomorrow, Sunday, whenever. Yeah, Sunday, I think. He sent me ten dollars. He said, "Have a drink on, oh. on me, why?" Uh, oh, that's lovely. Yeah, the Canadian dollars, so they don't really count like Monopoly money. I'll just have to buy a small drink. Sorry, Jerry. <laughs> so you open tomorrow? Oh, I'll be in with me, I hurt my aluminium tomorrow. I couldn't get anything else in car. Oh, oh well. Bye bye. I'm not I won't waste a I'll be back in time to watch snippets of King Charles's coronation, which I did. And uh, I'll be having that drink someone sent me some Canadian dollars for later. Thank you very much. Well, this is looking up our street. That's my house. And you can see, not very patriotic. The street at the top has got some bunting up. Okay. Right. Oh, well, those beautiful, tu them beautiful tulips, aren't they? Look at them. The ducks. What happened to the ducks? Well, only a few days after I filmed them, you know, probably four days after I filmed them. Uh, Keith lives here, was telling me that uh, mo the mother and her chicks were all congregating round the door and mother was getting very agitated, jumping on the fence, jumping off the fence, jumping back on the fence, jumping off the fence. Uh, this was about 5.30 in the morning, it was an early riser. So, uh, he opened the gate and the mother and the chicks waddled off up the street. Whether they make nice, it's quite a way to the nearest pond from here, but they just raise the chicks over and toddle off to the nearest pond. We're going for a walk. Got to give way at the, uh, the lines. Well, as you can see there, the road ahead is closed because that street applied for a road closure he didn't realize that uh, which we're entitled to do so if you want to have a street party you just apply to the council and it gets passed that car's come down this way but i thought this street had applied for a road closure as well find out when we get there all right so as you can see this street is just decked out with bunting 
on all the houses. And it was a pity, only the other day, all these cherry blossom trees were all in full colour. Uh, well, it looks like a lot of them. But they're blown off. No, don't look in escape, Ian. Ian, Ian, just walk by. Right. Right, so there we go. Uh, this is the real reason for calling round here. Well, more to show you the bunting. Uh, the, the street party's here tomorrow. Uh, I've asked to come round and could I just take some rubbish off it? Which is, uh, wire, sockets, fuses. And he's just given me big LED panel. So, let's take that home. We've made that back home now. And I have to change the t-shirt as well. Can't, have, can't go visiting the neighbours, can I? It's in Miss Groves. Orange juice. So, big LED panel. That should be nice. Right, I've just got to crack on with that. Look. I think it's all the bins are back. Oh, my cast alley. I can feel it spitting. Clean hands. Right, crack on. I suppose I'd better give you some Omer action. So easy these. Then, then I should be able to just knock that end off. I could use a chisel. all over the bench into the iron bin then just knock the ends off oh a lovely copper and then and then that's got to stay here and they've got to go down or they stay there, and that's got to go down. Easier that way. Where's my other one gone? These are near enough the same height, so I can do that. Can't I? See the rabbit now, can't it? So, <laughs> dog, dog, I've got a dog ball which I use to put all my tools in because I knock off all the little magnetic, magnetic -y bits. So, that goes on there. Me, ready to have a little tidy up here and 
then uh, we can decide whether you're doing the solenoids now or doing the solenoids later. But really, I want to tattle, I need to tattle that. Uh, so all that circuitry board, because I need to make a trip to where I keep those. Till then, it's put my hammer out the way, put the dog ball out the way, move the V block, and night scrapper. I have got a spur V block in here somewhere, and I will dig it out for you. And speaking of digging things out, a bit of brass. <laughs> I get in there. So Rob Moore's uh, wanted me to find if I had a <coughs> panel beating hammer. Well, I knew I had one somewhere. I didn't know where. Well, yesterday when I had to move all that shelf to take that bin out, I found that behind the. So there you are, Rob. A panel beating hammer. He said nothing about it having a shaft in. So. There you are. That's, that's Rob. Small engine repairs. Rob. Small engine repairs. Done. Then I'll find a V block for Night Scrapper. And then I have another thing to do for someone else. And I should have made run all my uh, errands for people. Promises. Not quite. I've got something else to send. A sticker to send somebody's. His three year wakes nearly come up. Right. Tarry up. Right. For that, we need this pan. Why do we need a pan? We need a pan, we need a brush. And what happens now is put them over there. We pull the biggest stuff off, right? Just straight in there. Like that. And we get our sieve. What is he doing? People are asking this over. Oh, put that on there. Put that in there. all my iron filings from all my grinding because that I use to uh, take the iron out Because what's left in here now is non-ferrous, so it's either plastic or non-metallic, non-metallic. Or it's metallic and non-ferrous. So I could pull those bits out. See, bit of, bit of copper. That goes in me. Copper tub, that goes in me. Copper tub, those are iron, that's iron. Those are numb, those are stainless, so they go in my stainless bag. Uh -huh. Brass, another bit of brass. 
nothing else than I want. Into the rubbish bag. I'll show you what I do with that. Well, I haven't walked so far because I only live there, right? But I, it's an elderly lady that lives here and I look after her lawn for her. So, well, I mow it. But it does get a lot of moss. Here and there and in places. I know it's the sign of bad drainage. But uh, until I get a chance to sort out the drainage, you've got to kill the moss. And if you didn't know, moss does not like iron. So when you buy moss killer, it's usually got iron in a format that can go onto the ground. So usually iron sulfate. And you sprinkle it across and I don't know, it kills the moss, but if I've got a load of iron filings, then I can also do the same thing. Just sprinkle it where there's moss. I say sprinkle. Oof. I actually pour it in there and then shake it about, which I can't do if I'm holding the phone at the same time. So I've got rid of the iron, iron dust. I mean, I could throw it in my bucket and weigh it in, but this way, it serves a better purpose. Put that away. And I think the next thing is, sort out my bags. And big. Not loads and loads of cable because he got wise and he started keeping them for himself. So, so I'll take the rubbish. Plastic. Keep the cable to one side, ready to go through the stripper. I can keep the bag for taking the cable sheathing that's left after I've stripped it. Ethernet cable goes as household. So I've got a bag started with householding. So it's basically quickly go through these, add the cable to the right bags, and I get space. And this is what I like. I like looking at these to seeing what we have. Take the rubbish out. And then we get, well, useful to me, screws. You know, and clips. And iron, so they're going iron then. It's just sorted it out. I won't say boring, because you never know what you're going to find. You know, screws always come in useful. And a bit, little bit, a little bit of copper to make it all worthwhile. But I do also tend to find a lot of these nickel plated ferrules and they're copper. And for that, I have a tub of nickel plated copper. 
therefore let's get set up and let's go through all them bags for the rubbish alley cans for the alley can bag iron a nice length of corrugated conduit I'll keep that that might come in handy these big bags of silica desiccant I'm sure I can do something with that silica sure I can right cast alley uh, that's Iron, iron, iron cable, cable, brass. Oh, you never know, you're looking at a raffle. Plasterboard screws. Yeah, you people saying, Ian, you're wasting your time here, but that's what I like doing. Oh, unlucky. Brass looking, but not brass. Right, Ian's gonna go through all these bags and we'll see what the next job is so with all those bags stripped not a fantastic a lot uh household cable cable worth stripping although you do get nickel coated copper out of that uh it is a bit disappointing when you pull out that and you think oh yes on another one and you'll find out it's already been stripped so that's a bit disappointed we have got some bits of cable and single uh, solid core worth stripping. Bit of copper, bit of brass, bit of alley. Rubbish, load of, load of screws, not some bolts come in handy. A bit of iron, I've already to throw it in as I get it across it. More of these nickel coated copper ferrules. Throw them in there. Now, I was thinking of letting scrapping Irish off the hook here. And then I thought, no, oh, I'm doing this for Pooh's mate. We're calling out scrapping Irish again because there's quite a few of these. Quite a, quite a bag full. And I believe scrapping Irish is going to do a video on how to remove these gold pins. I'm not like putting under any pressure. I mean, I mean, it's only been two years. Right, carry on regardless. So moving over here, what have we got? We got some sort of connector with a little brass ferrule in. Yes, I will smash it out, it's only plastic. We've got a roll of self amalgamating tape. So, like, like, you wrap it round and it melts to itself. That's why it kind of looks like that. And one of these infernal vape pens. Not so bother bit that in because that's been in somebody's mouth all right. But I watch a guy, well, a friend of a guy called Dubious Engineering. And he's been picking these up and dismantling them to take out the used once lithium iron battery howard uh, is a electronic guy he, he does a lot of retro computers acorns bbc's uh, uh, vic 20s sinclairs stuff like that commodores amigas but he also builds things and he's now taken to taking the batteries out of these because you find them all on the street everywhere and he's amazed that some of them have a really quality battery in. Right. Like I said. <laughs> yeah, just in case you think I was joking. Right, it's just easy, really. It was in the, the recessed hole. You just put your pin punch through there, punch it out, and uh, tap brass. Because every little... 
helps. Oh, half past four. So, I've been out this all day because I was, I think I went to the yard at half past nine this morning. Right, we'll just pause Elvis volume 10. And we've got to change a plan because what I'm going to do now is going to take me all night. Well, I enjoy it. We've put a put a barry up. We've shoved stuff that way a bit and put all the circuit boards I can find in a sack there. And I guess you lot will understand why. All right. So I'm going to leave you lot here now. I'll show you more tomorrow because what I'm going to do now is going to take me a good couple of hours. So, thanks for watching. See you soon. Because I've just got to keep. plugging away at this lot. <laughs> hey! Tell you what, they don't have a shot loot when you knock the pins out of them. Lovely brass. Boy, oh, a lousy shot for you. Hey, not too bad. And we're still, still listening to Elvis number 10.